What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to the video. Now this is actually going to be a vlog, which I haven't shot one in a long time and it kind of feels a little bit weird vlogging, but it was actually one of my favorite styles of video to shoot in the beginning, so I'm kind of happy to be getting back to this. But before we get into the vlog, I just want to say to you guys, I hope all of you are staying healthy, happy, safe, and keeping in good mental health. That was a big one for me and that's kind of why I've been away for a little while. I really bit off more than I could chew and then my life started falling apart with wedding plans. I should be on a plane right now that I'm not. Just like everything that I was looking forward into my life got canceled. Our wedding is still up in the air. Like it, it's been chaos. But I'm really trying to look on the bright side and I think that's gonna be like the theme of this video is things have changed but I've done some things to try to you know help myself. Maybe you know I'm still staying keto, I'm still doing things like that and I'm finding ways to adapt with the current environment that we live in because it's definitely crazy times and we're all going through it together. But to the video today, guys, I'm gonna show you some cooking, a little bit of keto stuff, a little bit about my life, maybe some things I'm doing around the house since we can't really leave. And if that sounds good, you guys, hang on tight and let's get right into the vlog. Well guys, I thought a cool way to start this vlog would be to show you some of the projects that I'm working on and predominantly it's one big project uh, in terms of a recipe for you guys. And it's something that uh, I got a lot of requests from when I did that Aldi versus um, Uprising Foods bread review. People were asking me for a bread recipe and I never really worried about it because bread isn't something that I typically miss on keto. I'll just wrap it in a tortilla or something. But I decided I would give it a crack at it and I think it's been turning out pretty well. Now what I'm about to show you is the result of probably 20 hours of experiments and a couple hundred dollars in ingredients more than likely. I think I've gone through like six pounds of almond flour. Don't worry, we are eating all the mess ups which probably isn't great for our diet. But we're on quarantine and my weight is staying the same so I am quite happy with that. In any case, let me show you what I'm currently working with right here. So here is the current bread recipe. And you guys can see that I did cut a slice off of it. It's a pretty good sized loaf of bread. Um, the texture is pretty great. This was sitting out overnight after I sliced it, so the end is actually not that dark. I'll slice a bit here and show you, but I think this is gonna be a great recipe. It's got a nice crust on it. You can see there's some good give to the bread. Let me go towards the end here and show you the texture a little bit better. Um, and this stuff's super, super easy to make with just ingredients around your house. No need to buy anything special there. As a note, I think we're gonna do a cook along later this week with one of these awesome recipes. I've got a shortbread cookie, a chocolate brownie, and a snickerdoodle. So I think we're gonna do a cook along with those. Let me know which one you guys wanna see me cook for the cook along. And I've actually talked to the people at Kiss My Keto and my uh, contact over there is actually gonna give away some baking mixes to one of you guys. So I'll let you guys know about that in that video. Just watch out for that video if you're interested in trying these. And if you can't wait and you wanna get your hands on some now, there is gonna be a link in the description of this video to Kiss My Keto. And if you use the code Black Sheep Keto, you'll save yourself 10% and support the channel, which is pretty awesome. Now in terms of other projects I'm working on other than the bread, obviously guys, I did have that book deal and that has been going really nicely. I think the book is going to be completely written in the next like three to four weeks. It has been an insane amount of work just cracking out recipe after recipe after recipe. Um, so when I say I kind of took like a week vacation a little bit early, so instead of, you know, my cruise got canceled, I was supposed to be on a flight right now, it's a little disappointing. But when that happened, I was like, okay, well, you know, I need a mental health break. I need to just take some time for myself. So I took about a week off of basically everything that was stressing me out. Um, and in that time I was still creating recipes because it's something that I really enjoy to do and it kind of helps me out, kind of takes my mind off of things. So I made a lot of progress there um, and thankfully that's been the case because even with making as much progress as I have, I've been like barely meeting my deadlines if I'm being honest with you guys. Uh, it's been a very, very stressful project. In any case, that is almost done. We got like just a couple more chapters and that'll be good to go. Hoping to have that out later this year, but guys, more information on the cookbook will follow. Um, but yeah, some of the recipes in there, I'm like sitting there going, man, I wish I'd have put that on my YouTube channel. And thankfully, maybe when the book's out, I'll be able to get permission to do that. But some of these recipes have turned out awesome and I've learned a lot about creating recipes for you guys that I am gonna release for free later on. So that's even better. Not to mention, I think you guys are gonna get a version of that bread recipe a little bit later this week after we do the Kiss My Keto cook along. So I moved the camera and grabbed myself a slice of that bread. I actually couldn't do it over there because you know, two hands. Um, so here's a close up of the bread, hopefully that focuses. I'm gonna kinda of tear it a little bit so you guys can see the texture that we're working with. I think this is very, very close to being done. It's got a nice crust on it, the loaf rises nicely. It doesn't need any special equipment. I'm not using a bread pan, anything. It's just a giant loaf of the dough that I make stuck on a baking sheet and stuck in the oven. 
stuff is actually really, really good. I actually had to send it to my mom um, to get tested because a lot of the people that I know don't have ingredients right now. My parents are actually starting keto. So I send them some of my recipes to taste test because the problem when you're making recipes is you've tried so many failed attempts that when you get a good one, you kind of start questioning yourself. Like, is it good because I've tasted so many bad ones or is it good because it's good? So this is especially one when it comes to bread and baked goods. I want to send it to people who are just starting keto or, you know, people that really will be honest with me and give me their feedback because I honestly can't tell you if uh, something tastes good or not. It's been a long time since I've had a lot of these pure ingredients. So sometimes I end up having to go out and buy non-keto stuff to see if it tastes similar. But I also wanted to send it to people who are just starting out and their taste buds haven't fully adapted to see what they think of these ingredients. So I'm thinking that this is pretty much our finished product. I may actually make it a little bit taller. That way it's a better sandwich slice because currently, let me put this back together. That would be a pretty small sandwich. So if I can get maybe another 50% on it, um, just up the recipe up 50%, it'd make a great sandwich slice. But I don't wanna go too big and have it be like this massive thing that like it would take eight people to finish. Uh, I don't wanna make you guys like overeat because the recipe is so large. So that's kind of the balancing act here. But as far as I'm concerned, this bread is actually really delicious. Well, now that I'm talking about increasing the volume of that bread by about 50%, I think it's about time I do it. So I'm gonna kinda of do a cook along here with you guys, explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. It's not gonna be an official video. I may or may not give out all the uh, measurements until the full recipe comes out, but at least you guys get to see what this is gonna look like when it comes out later next week. So now that that is in the oven for, uh, I don't know, it's gonna be like an hour and a half, hour 45-ish for that, since it is a bigger loaf. Normally the smaller loaves take about an hour 10 to bake. But anyway, it is in there for that time frame. Um, real quick, just wanna explain a little bit what I did there since I just kinda B-rolled the whole clip. What we've got going on is um, I'm basically building a loaf of bread out of almond flour, coconut flour, flax, and uh, ground psyllium husk powder. We are being careful with the psyllium husk powder to make it not so gummy. Um, the whole idea of this is that we're gonna have a nice kind of blend of different flours so none of them taste overpowering, but we're also balancing that out with some nutritional yeast or basically any yeast that you want to give it that bready flavor. While we may not be able to reproduce that wheat flavor that you get from bread, um, we can reproduce kind of that yeasty flavor which might trick your brain into thinking that it is real bread. At least that's been my experience. The other semi-challenging part with this recipe has been actually figuring out uh, how to get the dough just the right moisture content. Too wet and it'll fall flat and you'll end up with like a flatbread type thing. Uh, too dense and it just won't rise. I can show you guys a couple failures if you want, but just take my word for it and uh, that's what's been going on. So basically I scaled everything up by 50% um, and it's gonna basically be a little bit taller of a loaf and we'll see how that turns out. If it doesn't turn out well because there's just too much ingredients in it or it just turns out to be way too big of a loaf, we might go with that smaller loaf and then we'll just have people cut it in half and make it like a half sub sandwich if you wanna turn it into a sandwich. And other than that, you can crisp it up, make garlic bread, whatever, just like you would normally do it. That's the current game plan there. We'll see how it turns out in like an hour and a half. 
know, I mentioned in the intro that a lot of things have changed and um, I'm sure like with all of you guys, it's been a bit overwhelming, but I kind of wanted to talk to you about the things that have affected me and kind of how I'm looking at the positive side because mental health is so important, especially in times like this, we're all cooped up in the house. And uh, I felt it slipping on myself and I really needed to take a step back and you know, find the positive in everything. So I hope by sharing these things, it might help some of you guys that might be struggling mentally a little bit because guys, trust me, your mental health is not something to neglect. So let's just start off by saying right now, I should be on an airplane, like literally should be on an airplane right now, flying to Florida to board a ship that's gonna take me to like five different islands across the Caribbean over the next 10 days. Obviously that got canceled. And if you guys know me, um, I work basically sun up to sundown. I'm a firm believer in work hard, play hard. So I book these really long vacations where I can completely disconnect from the world because my normal day to day life is like wake up at like 7.30, 8am, maybe do some stretching in the morning, go to work, go to the gym, come home, start working on stuff for YouTube and the book and things like that. And basically around 9, 9.30 I finish up, maybe hang out, watch TV for about 30 minutes, go to bed, do it all over again. When you're doing that every day, it just takes a toll on you. It kind of feels like you've bitten off more you can chew. And I definitely did in this case, just trying to balance my day job with YouTube, with the book deal, with all sorts of other stuff. I became very overwhelmed and I don't think I was actually going to be able to finish everything in time. Um, so us being locked down in a ways and some, in some way having this cruise be canceled gave me the time that I needed because this last section of the book, I was actually only going to have a couple days to write a ton of it because I was going to be on this cruise. Again, don't think most of the time I just bite it off and try to hope I can chew it. And it doesn't always work out very well. But the positive here is that stress level went down because I've had the time, I've been around the house, even when I'm doing my day job, you know, for lunch, I can cook a recipe uh, or, you know, I can test something for you guys. Currently there's bread baking in the ovens for a recipe I'm gonna do later this week. There was a positive to that as well. Um, moving on, obviously guys, uh, I'm an avid motorcyclist. Some of you guys know that, some of you don't. I ride my Harley across the country, all sorts of stuff. Um, Laughlin River Run got canceled. That was a bit of a blow because after the cruise, we're like, okay, well, you know, it's all right. It's only three more weeks. We can go to Laughlin and, you know, hang out, ride our bikes around, swim, hang out on the river, whatever we we're going to do. That got canceled. Kind of was a bit of a blow as well there. And I think one of the harder ones for me to take was KetoCon being canceled. Uh, as you guys know, obviously I'm a keto influencer. I'm friends with a lot of keto influencers that live all over the US. These big expos are a great place for us to meet up and see each other. Um, I do live in Las Vegas, which is a popular tourist destination. So sometimes these guys that I've you know, met through the keto industry end up in Vegas and we'll meet up for a steak or something like that. And that's cool. But KetoCon is three days of being able to hang out with all of my keto friends and we can go out to eat together. There's no like discussion about, oh, well, I want to go get pasta. And you've got to be like, oh, well, I can't have that. Like everybody's on the same diet. Everybody's down. We find a restaurant that looks delicious. We roll in, hang out, good conversation, good people. Uh, and that one was probably one of the harder hits on me because now it's like going to be a whole nother year until I see these people, unless, you know, we go ahead and get something organized throughout the year. And I'm not ch uh, crossing out the idea of hosting a meetup myself, but we'll see. Now, when that got canceled, uh, it kind of was bad timing because that's actually a week after our wedding. We were going to get married, go on like a quick little vacation, then shoot over to KetoCon as kind of like an extended honeymoon type thing, as weird as that sounds. We're both keto influencers and it was like perfectly cool by us. But since KetoCon got canceled and that's after our wedding, it really called into play the feasibility of us getting married on June 4th. Now, at this point, we are still looking at getting married on June 4th. Um, we're not, that hasn't been officially crossed out yet but we're kind of being told to, hey, consider a backup. And that's a big blow there. If you've ever planned a wedding, you guys know just how stressful that is, how many vendors you have to contact, everything like that. Don't want to cancel it, don't want to move it. Like that is going to be a hard one to deal with. And we're doing the best that we can to get everything set up. Even if they have to cancel it for safety reasons, I think we're still going to have one of our friends get ordained online and just sign the marriage license and we're still going to get married that day. But you know, we might have to delay the party and that's not a great thing, but I think it'll be okay. We're just gonna roll with the punches here. But I guess my point of this is, is in everything, there is a bright side, right? So let's just look at the good things that have happened. A, you know, I've got some time to, uh, you know, spend a little bit more working on recipes, working on book. Instead of taking this week off where I'd have been on the cruise, I actually took last week off and kind of focused on my mental health because just everything was overwhelming, calling all these companies, sitting on hold all day, trying to get refunds, which no one's giving refunds. They'll just give you store credit that expires for flights and hotels and everything like that. It was stressing me out and I basically said, you know what, I need to just stop doing all this. I'm gonna just crack if I don't. So that gave me the opportunity to move my vacation up a week and kind of step back, take a mental health break and assess the situation with kind of a 
clean eyes, I guess. And that's where we're going now. So I'm recipe testing again. I'm, you know, writing this book. I'm doing all this stuff and I'm hoping to get a lot more YouTube videos out. In fact, Olivia and I have been brainstorming about cool ideas for new videos. I'm really excited about this now. And being cooped up in the house really just gives me basically nothing better to do if I'm being perfectly honest with you guys. So there should be a lot of new recipes and stuff that are getting tested and queued up for the future. But I just wanted to talk to you guys and say, look, you know, bad things happen. This is very unexpected. Everybody's hurting by this. Don't think that I'm, you know, I believe I'm the only one who's been affected by this. Everybody's been affected, some far worse than me. I'm totally blessed to still have my job. Olivia still has her job. We can work from home. That's far more than a lot of people in my city can say because this is a tourist destination and all of the tourist spots are shut down. Um, so there is some things to be thankful for. As much as overwhelming as it was, I uh, was able to step back, evaluate it, and go, okay, you know what? Let's take advantage of the good things that are coming now. And I want you guys to do the same. So I know this is a bit rambly, but just don't neglect your mental health, guys. Look at the positives. Look at the things that you're able to do because of this. Maybe it's, you know, hey, you've been wanting to spend more time with your family. Well, now you're all home together. Whatever that be, just try to focus on it, and we're all going to get through this together. And guess what? When this is all over, I guarantee you, man, at least me, I'm throwing a massive party, having all my friends over that I've missed, everything. And maybe you guys should do the same. So anyway guys, enough rambling there. I'm not really sure how to close out this clip, but uh, that bread is gonna be done here very short shortly. And I think I'm about to run to the store in a little bit and try to get some ingredients to make some dessert. So I'll bring you guys along for that as well. Okay, so I may have lied. There's still like an hour on that bread, but I'm gonna give you guys a status update. I know you're not supposed to open an oven while it's baking, but I blew out my oven light because I've been baking so much lately. So this is the only way to see it. But uh, we're about 35 minutes in. Hopefully you guys can see that. there's still an hour and five minutes left. Um, but I just want to show you guys how this bread has risen and kind of what it's going to look like. I'd say it's going to rise a little bit more, but odds are it's about the size it'll be when it comes out. So let's take a peek. That is actually looking pretty good to me. I can't wait till that comes out. So I will catch up with you guys then. Guys, the good news just keeps coming in. My Amazon package just finally arrived. So um, as you guys can see, my house is kind of small. Um, I actually bought this thing like end of my junior year, beginning of my senior year of college. Uh, back then, rent was more expensive than purchasing, so I bought this house. But it's like 1,400 square feet. My backyard, like I can literally like spit on the back wall from my fence. There's nothing here. Um, but being cramped up in here so long, there's a lot of the things that I've been wanting to do saying, you know, oh, when I have the time, I'll do this. And I just haven't had the time to do whatever it is there to make this house a little more comfortable for us. So, you know, since I've been getting, or since all these vacations got canceled, I had a little bit of free money and I decided to start bringing in some of those things. So the first shipments of those arrived and uh, now I get to kind of upgrade the house and that gives me, you know, something cool to look forward to. Some of it's unnecessary, but I'm a software engineer. I like techie stuff. So we're basically turning this place into a smart house and doing a few of the other things that we need. So here is what just came in. So in this big box right down here, uh, we got a nice little patio set. We've been wanting to spend time outside just to get some sunlight and I don't have anything out in our concrete slab of a backyard. So that's going to do that in here from Amazon. I went ahead and got a whole bunch of smart stuff. So this is going to be like a wireless, a smart outlet for outdoors. It'll turn on like some lights that are going to go over the backyard. Let's see what's in here. Uh, these are smart light switches, I believe. No, uh, these are these are outlets. These are the USB outlets. So um, I'm tired of having to carry around all of those like uh, USB charging bricks. So these have the two like US plugs on them and two USB ports on all the outlets. So I'm gonna put those in places where like I charge my phone or my camera equipment. That way I don't have to keep trying to find those little bricks because uh, no one sends them with the product anymore. Let's see, uh, here's some LED strips that we're gonna run behind the television to kind of give it like this cool glow effect based on the colors on the screen. And then here's a couple of light switches. These ones are for the three-way switches and the regular switches. That way I can control everything from the couch. We've also got some smart bulbs coming in and uh, just various stuff like that that I'm doing to kind of turn this place into something that I want. We're getting a new living room table because uh, that's basically the same one that everybody's parents had when they grew up. Um, just a lot of cool stuff that I'm doing to the house that I was going, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I have the time, I have a little bit of money since we're not doing any of these vacations. Let's just sit down and do it and make this place a more enjoyable place to be quarantined in. All right guys, the bread just came out of the oven and I actually have it sitting on a cooling rack because this is probably the hardest part of the recipe. First, let me show you the bread and then I'll explain. So, that's what we're looking at here for the second thing that was 150% of the original recipe. So if you can look, here's the original recipe. You can physically see. It's a bit bigger. 
not sure how I feel about it yet, but the reality of it is with this kind of a thing, um, we basically just have to keep trying till it works. That's just kind of the nature of the game. I'm not sure that it's worth going bigger because I feel like it spread out a little bit instead of went up. Could have made it a little bit thicker dough to prevent that, but just look at the size of that loaf. It looks a little big for most people. But now it is time for the hardest part because I can't try this yet. As with all keto baked goods, you really need to let them fully cool before you cut into them because you're gonna lose a lot of that moisture and it's gonna fall flat, that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna let this cool for like an hour and a half, two hours basically. It's just on a cooling rack on my counter and then I'll cut into it and we'll kind of give it a first bite together and see what I think about it. And if you guys are curious about anything else coming out of my kitchen, uh, just other things I'm working on, here is a nice cheddar biscuit. Uh, I made an attempt at these a while ago and I kind of like what I did here better. They're a lot lighter. They kind of resemble those um, red lobster style biscuits and uh, really liking these things. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna put this in the book or release it for free, but uh, maybe a little bit of both, we'll see. But these biscuits are awesome and uh, I'm really happy with the way they turned out for basically the second time I ever attempted to make them. So the bread that we made turned out pretty great and I made a couple other batches since then and I'll explain all that. So real quick, here is what that bread that was uh, one and a half times the original recipe looks like. It actually spread out more than I wanted, um, which kind of told me that it was a little bit too wet, but we'll go ahead and break it open here so you guys can see the texture. It's got a nice bread sound. Hopefully you can hear this. Nice good thump on it. The crust is nice and solid. Some pretty good squish. So I think this is a good bread, but I kind of felt like I was going too big at this point where, you know, the average person with like, you know, two people in the house doing keto, maybe four, that's a lot of bread to use and I don't want you guys overeating. Plus I needed to lift it a little bit more. So I went through and reformulated slightly. Now this is what I was left with next. Looks pretty nice. I went ahead and tried to cut a small slit up the center to help uh, expand it, but I don't necessarily think that's necessary and I won't be doing that in the future recipes. But what I didn't hear is I kind of built my own baking powder. So with baking powder, a little bit of science for you guys that are interested. Um, baking powder is just baking soda with basically cream of tartar or maybe cornstarch, things like that in it. Um, you basically need two times the amount of acid as you do the uh, baking soda. So there is two teaspoons of uh, cream of tartar and one teaspoon of baking soda in every tablespoon of baking powder. Cool enough, right? So what I did with this is I actually split it. I don't like the taste that cream of tartar leaves in things. So I actually end up using one teaspoon of um, baking, uh, uh, sorry, cream of tartar, which got rid of a good half teaspoon of the baking soda that's in here for me. And to get rid of the other half teaspoon that's in here, I actually used one tablespoon of lemon juice, which one tablespoon of lemon juice will be completely neutralized by a half teaspoon of baking soda. So we are actually burning off all the baking soda so we don't have that flavor. And it turned out to be a pretty nice loaf. In fact, I think you can make a halfway decent sandwich out of this. It's a little flat because I've been kind of like squishing it, checking the feeling. But if you guys look, it squishes real well. And let's take a look at the inside of it. So, pretty good bread. Hopefully it'll focus on that and not my face. Pretty good looking bread. Um, I don't have a knife near me, which is why I tore it, but uh, these things will actually be pretty good, I believe. And I think this is gonna be the final recipe. So I'm expecting to release this later this week if you guys are interested in the bread recipe. Anyway guys, I'm gonna head to the store and uh, kind of get some more ingredients to finish off some recipe testing that I'm doing. But I just saw that now the CDC is recommending that we all wear cloth face masks in public. So I went through my closet and found a few things and uh, kind of none of them are gonna work. So I'm gonna show you guys what I have and what I decided to go with instead. So option number one is my deer hunting mask. They said a cloth face cover. I think this will work and I don't see this ending badly in any way, shape or form. So we're gonna have to scratch that. Sorry about my hair guys, I uh, need a haircut desperately, but every barber in town is closed for at least the next month and since the wedding's coming up, I'm not about to try to at home it and screw everything up. Not a good idea. Option two was my motorcycle mask. Again, if you can picture me walking into a grocery store with this and a beanie or a hat on, I don't necessarily see that ending well. So let me show you guys something that we kind of picked up and uh, hopefully maybe it'll help keep one of you guys healthy and safe out there or you can pass that trick along to somebody who might not have any good masks at their house. So let me show you real quick. All right, everybody, I hope this trick helps somebody out there. But what I have in front of me is uh, just an old bandana. This is from the 77th Sturgis Rally. It's one of those free things. Um, but obviously these free bandanas are really thin and uh, kind of look funny when you have them tied to your face. So what we kind of figured out you can do with them is you fold it in half like this. Fold it in half again to where it's in quarters. And then get a hold of some hair ties. Um, and all you're gonna do is kind of run it between a quarter and a, a third of the way down each side, depending on the size of your face. And obviously if it's too tight, you can pull them a little bit further out later to loosen it up. So that you've got something like this, fold it over, 
and then these will go nicely right around your ears and you have a bit of a mask. Let me put this on and I'll show you guys real quick. So here is what we're left with and obviously this is a lot less threatening than the other options that I had. And guys, you can just adjust it by picking this up, moving the hair tie around and it'll fit your face. So hopefully that keeps some of you guys out there kind of that are worrying about going out in public and since the CDC is recommending a cloth face covering, that's a good idea if you've got any, uh, you know, bandanas laying around and nothing else to use, not an N95 mask, any of that stuff. So hopefully that helps somebody else out there. But with that guys, I am gonna go ahead and close the video. So if you like this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments for me, please leave them down in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor guys, hit that subscribe button, show some love, and I will see you in the next one.